Hi everyone, Christina here, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own custom interchangeable welcome sign using your own tech laser. So let's get started. Now you might be wondering what exactly is an interchangeable welcome sign? Well, these are becoming pretty popular. They pretty much allow you to take an element um, and you can swap it out depending on the event. If it's a different season, you can customize it however you see fit. And the files that I'm actually going to be using, some of the elements are available in the Omtech DIY shop. So make sure to check it out in case you would like to customize some elements on your own sign. Here we have a welcome sign that is already designed in Lightburn. I'm going to be trying a couple of different techniques today to show you the differences between these three options. And because I tend to view a sign as a layered object, I'm going to be sorting this out based off of the layers and what sheets I'm going to want to cut them with. So we have the border and the text that are actually going to be one layer. In my eyes, it's going to be a black layer. We have our bottom board, which is going to be a white layer. And then we have our elements. And our elements, I'm just going to be putting on some scrap material. Another thing I should also mention is you always want to make sure that you have the, the speed and power set to the correct material type. I already had this set up. I have a library over here, as you can see. And if you're interested in these libraries, make sure to check the OMTech Facebook group. This is where I got mine. And as you go, you can add your own settings that you prefer. I'm going to start spray painting the wood that I have. I'm going to be spray painting two boards. One is going to be white and one is going to be black. After we have it spray painted and dried, I'm going to be masking both of these boards. I'm just going to be adhering the masking down. I have a little squeegee right here and I'm just going to be pressing down to make sure that the masking is adhered correctly to the board. And then once I'm done doing that, I'm gonna be taking my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna be trimming the sides off. We're going to wanna to do the same to the blackboard as well. Now before I start cutting, because it is hot down here, I'm going to actually start my chiller up first and wait for that to bring the temp down and then I'm going to start my machine. And once that happens, I'm going to load up my first board, which I'm going to be doing the white. We're going to be following the same process that I follow in all my videos where we're going to want to frame it before we send it so we know where it's going to be cutting on our board. Awesome, looking good. Now I can send the file. And now I can start. And we're gonna wanna do the same thing to the other blackboard as well. I should have mentioned this before, but we always wanna make sure to check our focal height before starting any job. Because there's a lot to cover in this video, I'm just gonna be showing you how I have the elements lined up. And these are actually gonna be cut on a piece of plain scrap material. For the small pieces, I highly suggest using some double adhesive tape and just sticking your little pieces to it. And then I just stick them all in a cardboard box and spray away. And then once you're done, you can peel them off and there you go. Now when working with smaller designs, sometimes you might see a segment that is broken. Depending on how the design looks, because this is gonna be a bottom layer, I'm not too worried about it for this purpose, but we always wanna make sure that as we're sizing things that we size them correctly. And I'm gonna be showing some painting techniques that I use. 
Here are some acrylic paint pens that I really, really love. And I tend to start with a darker color and then I work my way to a lighter color. And as a finishing touch, I love to add little white dots to kind of give it some unique flair. And this is actually the engraved element, by the way. Now this element here is scored. If you're anything like me, <laughs> uh, these markers probably are not the best for the thin lines, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna give it a go. A lot of people prefer scoring versus engraving because it is a lot quicker. So if you have a lot of different elements that you're gonna be painting, it might be faster production wise to do scoring, but I'm gonna be following the same process uh, with these paint pens. I'm gonna add some fun flair with the white. These are actually little pieces of the bee that I had before because it is a two layered design. And I like to stick them on um, an adhesive double sided tape so they don't move around and it's a little bit easier to paint them. And I'm actually just using plain acrylic paint. And I am going to be using little dabs of water with orange to give a little gradient look to it. For the bottom layer, the only thing that I really care about painting are the wings, so I'm just gonna be painting them white. Because the bee is a multi-layered design, we're gonna need to glue the layers down first. Now to remove the masking, I have one of these little scraper tools. And all you have to do is gently pop the scraper tool underneath the masking and it'll just pop right up. We will wanna do the same thing for the blackboard as well. And if you have any pieces that are stuck, you can gently tap on them and they'll pop out. I have seen some people use these as templates where they would actually glue the piece and then pop it in where the board is. Once I have my location, which I'm happy with this placement, then I can start sticking it. And I am going to be using a different glue than I usually use because I have had issues with my previous glue and humidity. If there is too much glue on the base of some of your letters, you can just gently dab it to the paper towel and then you can place it. Once we have all of our text glued down, we want to weigh it down with some kind of weight to make sure that it adheres nice and good. So I'm going to be placing a paper towel over the text. And I have this broken cutting board that I received at one point, and I'm just going to be using this as a weight. It is pretty heavy. And after 24 hours, I pull it off. that is stuck on there nice. And for this area here, because we're gonna want to make a interchangeable sign, I'm gonna be using some magnetic tape that I had on hand. You can use the magnetic dots if that works better for you. I will say that this magnetic tape is light stick. So if you have a larger sign or a heavier sign, I'd probably recommend something more heavy duty. And then you're just gonna wanna cut a little piece to fit your area. Although the magnetic strip has its own adhesive backing, I do suggest using some type of super glue just for that extra strength. I have had issues in the past with the magnets popping off without the glue, so I do suggest it. I'm just gonna gently wipe away some of the excess glue from the corner, and I'm gonna stick my paper towel and cutting board over it again. We will wanna follow the same process of adding the magnetic tape to each of our design elements. To complete the sign, I'm actually going to be using some twine that I had left over from another project, and I'm gonna be hot gluing it to the back of the sign. They do always recommend if you are selling signs or making custom signs that you don't include any kind of backing because of potential lawsuits and legal reasons, but this is a personal sign. I'm okay with it. It's just gonna be hanging on my wall. Then I'm gonna let it dry for a bit. 
Another thing you can do if you're anything like me and have random cut out designs lying around is you can actually add a magnet to the back and stick it to your sign. I like reusing a lot of my elements if I do another project or a personal project or I'm just testing out different things. I try to find uses for them and what better use than to stick them to a sign. The bee design and the mushroom design are actually Ohmtech exclusives, so you can find both of these files on the Ohmtech DIY shop on the website.